In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the Replit agent in order to make my own personal productivity tracker from scratch. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a clear insight as far as whether paying for Replit is going to be the right fit for you, since I'm sure you guys know all of these coding AI subscriptions, they all cost money and those can all add up really quickly, especially if you're already paying for something else like ChatGPT. So I just wanted to share my experience from beginning to end for the first time when I really used the Replit agent. And when I say from scratch, what I mean is I really just started with this really ugly drawing of a tracker I wanted. As you can see, this is supposed to be a productivity tracker where I can keep track of three different things. So it all counts up to 100. And this is what I started. And I ended up with this, which I was really happy with. As you can see here, I can click and that keeps track of my clicks as far as the amount of comments I'm posting. This keeps track of the amount of messages I sent, whether that's email or outreach. And I even have a timer here. And these can actually all be switched to timers for keeping track if I'm timing myself when I'm making content or when I'm working on content. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's completely fine. There's something from the school games. That's that project with Alex Hormozis and Melvins. So if you're not into that, completely fine. But kind of like to my point, this is what I ended up doing. I start with this just very ugly thing because again, I have no UI, no UX experience. I work as a backend developer. I don't touch anything in the front end like this. And I ended up with something that was actually very nice looking and it's been very helpful since I started using it. And you guys already know this in the description, I'm gonna be dropping the links with all the resources, all the stuff you need, this code or whatever else I end up using to put all this together. I'm gonna to give you access to all that for free. And as an added bonus, I recently just launched a free school community. So definitely join this if you're trying to get better at AI, you're trying to get better at making money with AI, or even if you're like me, you're making YouTube videos about AI or tech stuff. Definitely, if you're working hard towards that, definitely want you to be a part of this and contribute to the positivity in this community that I'm confident is gonna grow very quickly. And if you're really serious about improving and growing your technological skills, I definitely want you to join Simplify AI. This is where we focus on making sure you develop core skills in technology that expand outside of just the latest LLM model, the latest ChatGPT version, the latest coding editor. This is gonna help you get real skills in terms of the basics of programming, the basics of software development from a technological standpoint that is also beginner friendly, but that will help you expand the complexity and skill of the projects that you make. So check that out as well. So the first thing we're gonna do before we even start making anything in Replit is we're gonna actually kind of try to draw it out here in Lucid Charts. I think even though it's still an AI agent, you probably have to try and be as clear as possible with the directions you give it. You know, you give it better context, you're probably gonna get better results, similar to like when you prompt, if you have a good prompt, that gives you a good response. So what is it that we wanna do here, right? Well, I really want this to be kind of like how I mentioned, similar to this little Chrome attachment I have here, where if I click it, it's gonna increase the numbers. But instead of just having one, I actually wanna have three. So. We can actually extend this a little more just for you know fun and games and we can just get a couple more of these right we can get another little triangle paste it on here and we can actually make this into a little square and let's actually make this a little bit wider so it's going to be like one clicker and we put 100 here since we want them all to go up to 100 and we'll do another one here and another one here I know I could probably use Figma for this, but I just like using Lucid charts. And actually, I'm gonna try and be a little bit fancy here and try to do it with, let's get this text up here. I wanna have at least some initials at the top of each one just so I can identify it. So we could say that it'll be kind of like the C for comments. And then we also want O for outreach or yeah, I guess for message outreach and then content. We would also use a C for content. Well, we would use a B for video content. So this 100 comments to see 100 messages sent out and this is video content minutes spent on it so similar to this application on here whenever we click it we want to be able to you know basically scroll up by one this is going to be our counter that we just want to keep handy in our desktop and maybe we even have a little button on here to completely reset them all i'm not sure about that but we can worry about that logic later let's put a little x here for reset and we'll just rename this school games 300 counter okay simple right 
So I know we've already talked about this and maybe it seems very straightforward in like a little bit of overcode to have to draw this out. But for anything you plan out, especially as your projects get bigger, the more time you spend just being clear either visually or in writing with what you're trying to create, it's going to make it easier for you to make progress whenever you run into obstacles, as well as if you're working with a team. Vision boards are just really great to convey ideas to others that are stuck in your head. And, you know, talking to someone in a meeting about a thing you're trying to make isn't as efficient as just showing them. So now that we have this defined, let's actually, you know, to be honest with you, I don't even know if I can put pictures in the Replit agent, but now even just looking at this, I have a clear definition you know, even at least for myself and for you guys of what I want to make. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it looks like you can attach files on here, which is awesome. That's going to be really helpful. We're still going to spend time describing what it is that we want to do, but I'm sure it's going to be more helpful to give it better context like that. So again, we want a description to be straightforward, but detailed. So we'll start with, I want to make a Chrome extension. Then what does this Chrome extension do, right? This Chrome extension is going to be a counter. It's going to have three different counters. The point of each counter is that when I click it, it will go up by one. And then here we can talk a little bit about the initials we want on it. Counter, the first counter will have a c in initial above it the second of a m initial above it the third will have a initial above it let's see what else are we missing we also want to leave a little bit of space for the logo i think i would want to make it have a little bit of an opening where i can put the school logo even though it's not an official product but something like that I want it to have some space at the top center to upload a logo and then for the part for resetting it i'm still not too sure about that so i might leave that on the open and i want to have the ability to reset the counter either for each individual one or for them all you can help me figure that out okay cool so we already mentioned what we want to do with this i don't think i mentioned that it should go only up to a hundred so let's put that in here okay so i put here the limit of the counter should be up to 100 and well you know i'm not really that familiar with chrome extensions but i'm assuming you could just build this package out and then manually upload it to google chrome to load it up I don't know if I'll put it on the store. That kind of like sounds like its own headache, but the easier it is to download and deploy, the better, right? I'm sure there's different frameworks that can be used for this. So let's emphasize that we want a simple way to download and deploy it. So I'm gonna say I want to be able to easily download or zip so that I can quickly deploy this on my desktop, Google Chrome. And cool, so let's take a screenshot of our board. I'm just Upload this here. Cool. And let's see what happens when we click start building. Cool. So it says it's thinking, it's reading the instructions. That's fine with me. I don't expect this to be instant. Okay, cool. So as a reply, I've only used this a couple of times, but I do like that it kind of gives you suggestions for what other things you might want for the app. So let's read through these real quick. It says, I create a plan for your Chrome extension counter, it includes three counters with initials, reset functionality, a space for logo. The extension will be packaged for easy deployment. Let me know if you'd like to proceed with this plan or if you need any modifications. So of course, by default, we want to build the initial prototype. Then here it says, would you like any of these additional features? We can also make changes later. Add persistence to save counter values between browser sessions. Okay, that's actually a good idea, especially if me if I have multiple browsers open, or if I, I guess, turn it off, turn it back on, implement customized, customizable counter labels. That's actually neat in case I want to change the initials or the names, add a dark mode option. That's a plus for any application nowadays is what I hear. And then we have create settings or page for more advanced configurations. Okay. So I think those are all super great suggestions, but because I really just kind of want to see if it can make the thing and if we can use the thing. Later on, if we can customize it, that would be great. But I don't want to start going down a rabbit hole of a Replit agent scope creep because maybe I asked for too many features at once and start getting errors. And again, because I've never really worked with Chrome extensions or really I just don't do any 
UI stuff at all. That could easily be a way to just get caught up in the weeds. So let's not do any of those and let's just start this. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because those might be features I want later. So if this goes quick, sure, we can start adding them one by one. But for now, we just want the simple one. We're getting some JSON files and some HTML files. All right, so just finished building and sorry if it looks like I'm not looking at anything, but I kind of had to move the camera, the camera window because it was getting in the way of this. But anyway, let's zoom in here for a bit. And then, okay, we see build the initial prototype, ready to share, deploy. Let's see, I've completed the plan successfully. One step was executed. Okay, build the prototype. So I'm assuming we should be able to just run it here and it should work. That's the most intuitive thing at this point, but if not, we could definitely ask it. So it's not really doing anything after clicking run. Again, Chrome extension is something completely new to me. So let's go ahead and ask it because I assume that a lot of people that are gonna be using this product and try to benefit from it, probably are not gonna have a lot of technical experience. So. I think this is still a valid test. So let's just ask it, how do I run this? Okay, cool. It's giving me some instructions on how to run this, which is great. It's saying, okay, so we're gonna open Google Chrome on your browser, type extensions in the bar, the top right corner, and it will enable developer mode. Click on the load unpack button, appears on the top left. Okay, cool. Navigate to the folder containing your extension. Okay, manifest.json slash pop-up HTML. So it looks like we're gonna download all these files, cool. Uh, the extension should be loaded and visible on your Chrome browser. Click on the puzzle piece icon in the Chrome toolbar to see your installed extensions. Okay, cool. Click on the School Games 300 counter extension icon to open the pop-up and use your counter. Remember, aim to make changes to extension code. You'll need to go back to the page and click the circular arrow icon in order to reload it. We'd like me to guide you through packaging the extension for easier distribution. So this is already very good, these directions that it's giving us, it's breaking it down in very clear steps and it's even offering, do you want me to elaborate on that? So let's just say yes. Okay, so give us great. I'll guide you through the process of packaging your Chrome extensions for easier distribution. This will create a zip file that you can easily share, upload to a Chrome web store if you decide to publish it. And it looks like it's running the commands in order to package it for us. Okay, cool. And now if we look here at the top left, we just got this counter that zip file which I'm assuming that's what we're gonna upload. And it looks like it made a couple of other new Python files, which I'm assuming are the scripts that package everything up for extension. Okay, cool. So it looks like it finished packaging it up and it looks like it built some scripts as well to help us package and distribute again later on. So let's try downloading it and doing what it told us in the directions. So we scroll back up here. We're gonna open our Google Chrome and which we are on there in forward slash extensions. So let's even copy that. We don't even want to type that right now. And cool, here we have our extensions, nice. And then I remember it said something about developer mode. Let's toggle this on right here. Great, uh, what else did we have to do? Okay, we're at this part in top right corner, toggle developer mode. So now we're gonna click load on pack button, which appears on the left. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And we just downloaded this and it's not letting us click that. So, okay, so load on pack, navigate to a folder containing your extension files. So it looks like the folder itself shouldn't be zipped. That was just too downloaded. So let's go ahead and unzip it real quick. Okay, so that's our folder right there with all the files in here cool stuff and it looks like it even gen generated the icon for us which is pretty neat cool so let's go back on here load unpacked we have our folder right there select okay cool it loaded it up let's see so now the extension should not be loaded visible in your chrome browser okay cool click on the puzzle icon the chrome toolbar to see your installed extensions okay so we should just be able to click on here and see it and this is one right here and oh wow that's pretty nice. Very simple looking. It actually looks very similar to the Lucid chart, but that's right here and it works. And we have the buttons to reset all. We have, let's see, we can reset C. Okay, so it was very literal in that aspect. And yeah, we can reset all of these individually. So I think this is definitely a win. Honestly, I expected at least some kind of error, like maybe even just something with the files not running right. I do see here it's only a couple scripts, but yeah, this, I mean, this only took like what, 10, 15 minutes. Most of the time was me really talking. So this, I mean, for you guys, it'll probably take like probably five minutes or depending on what it is that you want to deploy on here. It's pretty cool. 
in we have here the option to add the logo so it lets us upload it that's pretty crazy if i had to have done it on my own i probably would have just hard coded the image on here but we have the option to upload it that's very nice and yeah we like that we can reset it so we still have that option on here for the other features of one of us i took a screenshot of it but let's see if it can remind us of it real quick but first let's be nice and say thank you let's say this works great thank you what were the other features you recommended? Cool, and it says, thank you for the positive feedback. See, you're nice to it, it's nice to be back. I'm glad the extension is working great for you. As far as the other features we recommended, here's a list of potential enhancements. Add persistence to save counter values between browser extensions. So that would be pretty valuable because, I mean, if Chrome crashes or you closed it or um, assuming it's supposed to work if you have multiple Chrome browsers open, logged into the same account. Implement customizable counter labels. That would actually be a uh, pretty too. I'm not super sold on the initials. Maybe we want icons as well. Add a dark mode option for better visibility. I'm surprised that's not the number one recommendation. And create a settings page for advanced configurations. Now this little counter I have on here does have like a you know, little settings page where you can, I guess, change the colors and stuff which honestly, I just didn't want to deal with that, but that's definitely more of a more complex task if you ask me, but yeah, overall, this is great. So after going for a quick run, I decided that I do want to keep improving on this product. It already works. I would say for my use case, it's a pretty good MVP. It clicks, it logs in the changes I make, and that's already good enough. But what if I want to share this with more people? What if I want to share this with the other people or the other community members in the school games? Maybe Alex or Mosey will see it. Maybe Sam Ovens will give me a like if I make a post about it. And most importantly, if other people can use this tool and helps them reach their goals, I'd like to think I'd feel good about that. So let's go ahead and continue. We're going to do some of these items that it's proposing to us. But the other element I would really want to implement is I would want to make this look actually move my screen because it's in the way I would want to make the tool look a little bit nicer, a little more aesthetic, if you will, because for me, even though I work as a backend developer, my greatest weakness is definitely anything with the UI, anything that's graphics related, anything that's supposed to look nice and aesthetic. I've never been good at that. Whenever I did school projects, I would always leave that to someone else because I don't have that visual artistic talent, especially not in something like graphic design or UI UX. So that would be the real win here if we could kind of communicate those ideas to the Replit agent and get a way better looking product on top of all the really good features, which so far, I don't want us to shoot ourselves in the foot, has been working pretty well. So let's actually take this list and we're gonna put it in our Lucid chart sport or, or Lucid Spark. And you know, we're gonna handle this like we would, I guess a school project, if you will, right? We're gonna you know, we're going to be organized. We're going to take it one step at a time. Yes, it's an AI agent. Yes, it's functioning pretty well so far. Hold on, let me change the color here. Like I was saying, yes, it's AI technology, but we still want to treat this almost like its own project. We want to treat the AI agent almost like it's this developer we're outsourcing work to. And like anybody we outsource work to, the better we relate that information to them, the better results we're always going to get. And that way, if we get a version that doesn't work the way we want it to, or we have to undo some changes, that's something that I'd be looking forward to addressing with the Replit agent. You know, how does it handle if maybe you get to a point in the app where it's just not working the way it's supposed to? Do they have like an undo button or something like that? Something to pretty much roll back the changes or roll back the deployment, I guess, would be another way to put it. So yeah, so, so we have this first part done. So let's get a little check mark. On here, let's see, emojis, icons, let's look for check mark. Cool, so this green one right here already works. So now we wanna go ahead and we wanna do the persistence part of it. I think that'd be super important. And actually, before we would start developing it, we wanna check and test that it's failing just because you always wanna test out something like that. So let's go ahead and get started with that. But then I want to add a couple of other features. So let's write those in here to here i would say we want smaller and smoother icons so let's just put that we would want the colors to also match kind of like the aesthetic or the color palette that the school games already has or school communities and that's pretty much it that seems pretty simple but again if it was up to me and i had to go in there and do this manually i could probably get some of it right but i'm just not that familiar with enough of these front-end libraries 
I'm not familiar with making good front end design. So if the AI can do it and it's better and faster than what I would have done, then I'll go with it. So let's go ahead and continue with the persistence part of it. So here we, let's test it out. We have our counter. Obviously it stayed there because we haven't closed our browser, but what happens if just test it out, we open another tab. Okay, it's still on there. So let's close this out and let's open a new browser. So you have a new browser. It's still on there. I'm wondering if we have to completely, I do have other browser tabs open. So let's quit them all. Okay, so I completely restart Chrome. I guess it's still on there. So that doesn't really seem like it's a problem to me at this moment. So I don't really see a point in addressing it. Now, if I was gonna sell this as a product or market it or something, would I go more into depth as to why maybe there's times when it works and times when it doesn't? Of course, definitely, but that's not really the case right now. Oh, it's already implemented. Interesting, I didn't even see that. Let's check that out. Cool, so if we read closely, it was thinking ahead for us, even though we didn't really originally want to add that, it still went ahead and did because I mean, I guess AI does know a little bit better than us. So that's good to see, right? So we can check that off and we can move on to the next one, which is implement customizable counter labels, allow users to change CMP and other labels. Okay, cool. So we do want to implement that, right? Because at this moment in time, whenever we look at our extension on here, this looks very, I don't know, of course it looks this hard coded, looks ugly. This doesn't inherently mean anything to anybody that doesn't know what it would do. So we do want to have the option to at least customize that. So let's go ahead and tell to, to go with this step and we'll give it some more details. We'll basically just say that we want to continue with step two and that we don't necessarily know the best way to implement that. Is it going to be the option to customize the text? Is it going to be to have the option to upload custom icons? I'm not sure. So we'll convey that over to our agent and let it make a decision on that. Cool. So I just said, let's proceed with step two, the implementing the customizable counter labels. And I just put, I'm not sure what the best direction is. Give me some options or recommendation. And it looks like it's reviewing the instructions and it looks like it took the lead once again and it says it's going to change that. And that's pretty neat. Well, I guess it's the first change we made. So it's showing us the diff for the changes that it's doing on there. And while it works on that, I just thought of another feature that I would like on it, which I know poor, poor agent, right? We're definitely going to overwork it. But one thing I definitely don't really like, I'm not too big on is this, I guess what do we call that this border? I almost didn't see it before, but it's definitely a little too thick. So we can put a more aesthetic border and let's see where it's at with the other parts. Okay, cool. So it looks like it built it and deployed it. So I think at this point it would have created another zip file, but I'm not really sure because I don't see that on here. And I'm not sure if these are from the last time it ran. So we see here, right? It edited the HTML and some of the other visual files. I don't see anything about the actual zip folder. We do have this script for Python one. Maybe we're supposed to run it on our own, but I'm not really sure. Let's just download it again. I think it doesn't seem like it created a new zip file, but the intuitive thing would be that if it's making another version of it, I would think it would create a new package or at least ask us or let us know. Cause that's just, I mean, that'll be the easiest route to go, but let's just test it out. Cool. So let's open this and we're going to go to the extension. Cool. So let's unpack it and okay. Well, this was downloaded at that time. Okay, cool. And where do we have it on here? Okay, it still says 1.0. Yes, yeah, so it looks like it's pretty much the same still. I could just remove these and I probably should. But man, let's go ahead and zip it again. Now it's not too hard to just run these scripts manually. They're already written for us. I'm sure it's just Python and then the name of the file. But again, we're already paid for the Replit agent, so let's let's let it do the work, right? So let's just ask it, is there a new zip package for me already? Okay, so it's saying it'll create it for us. And we see here that it used the create zip.py and it says it was successfully created. This one has the M, which I'm assuming stands for modified. Cool, so we have that on here, create a new zip package with the latest changes. So let's download it once more. Cool, so we're in 2.2, it's gonna get a little bit confusing, so let's just do, 
Actually, why is there four? Interesting. I'm pretty sure it's this one, so let's just rename it. Um, just call it School Games 1.2. Let's close that. Let's go to our extensions. Load unpacked. Downloads 1.2. Select. Cool, it's on here. Okay, cool. So here we can actually just type in whatever we want. So we can put comments, which still looks kind of ugly. Messages and video. So that's probably was probably not the best. I'm not necessarily loving this. I do like how these buttons were reset. I think that's better. But even resetting this to default, that doesn't really do anything for me. And actually, let's just upload the school games logo here. So let's go to school. That's my school community. But let's go to the school games. Actually, let's just look up a school logo. Nice. So you can have a logo on here. You know, it's tiny. And what's an idea each time you do that? It reloads it. Yeah, so it's not. That does need to be fixed. So we can add that on here. And you see this way they call it scope creep because you have a set list of things that you want to accomplish and you end up adding more to the list. So we're actually just not going to add it because since it's going to be for the school games, this doesn't even need a custom logo. So we can actually give it the image and then have it load it on there however once but not scrappy with this as a text box i don't think it really gave me any options on it it just kind of did it and even if we change it i don't even know if that's going to persist let's see oh yeah so the text does persist which is fine i don't know if this is ideal and let me see where are we at so we're working on customizable counter labels we could actually just maybe Give it some icons and it could say comments, messages, and then what's well, not really video, it's content creation. But that's gonna look kind of weird. So we could do, well, I don't know what would be a good icon for a comment or a message. A message could be like a little envelope. And then what is creations? So it could be like a pencil. I don't know what it would be for comments. And then anyway, what I was thinking is we could just ask it what size or what type of files could go in here. We could make the icons with something like chat GPT and maybe just make sure we get the dimensions right and the size with Canva. And then we could put these on here and it could probably put them in there for us. I don't expect it to have image generation. I saw, I think I saw, yeah, this icon here was made, which it's not even really using it. But you know what? Let's, yeah, let's ask and let's say that we don't want text. We want three icons. We want one to represent comments, one to represent messages, and one to represent content creation instead of the letters. So I think that's a good way of wording it. So let me just type it out. Okay, so this is where I got and Sorry I didn't make the text bigger before, guys. So what I wrote is, let's consider an alternative. Instead of allowing users to modify the text, let's use static icon images, kind of like the one you generated, which is here, but for some reason it's not loading up. Here's what the icons will represent. Comments, as in comments and posts, YouTube videos, messages, as in outreach to other users, leads or emails, and content creation, either writing posts or the value of creating video content, and then generate these and put them in the extension. I think that's pretty straightforward, pretty clear. So let's just go ahead and launch it. So it looks like it's installing a library for, I'm assuming, image generation. I haven't used this pillow library before. Cool, so it's installing the library and now it's wrote a script to make use of that library and then he writes out a nice print messages here at the end let's see okay so we see that in the console too it's running on here so that's actually really neat that you can see all these different parts and you can see in the console the programs that the agent is running within the code editor so yeah, that's really cool actually and now it's checking if the icons were successfully generated. So I see here on the far left, we have this messages icon. So let's check that out. Okay, so that's ugly, but that's not going to matter right now. Let's see content icon. That's also kind of ugly and comments. Okay, so these are not great looking, but let's let it apply them. So uh, again, one step at a time. 
we, I mean, it's pretty nice that it installed that library and it made them for us. So yes, it generated the icons. So now let's modify the app. So I guess whenever it completes something, it gives you a summary of everything. It says initial prototype, Chrome extension, customizable counter and labels. And then after that was when we zipped and packaged and now we made the images for the icons. I don't think it's automatically creating a new zip package. So it's actually just do that. If you scroll here earlier, the last time we asked it, it did it with this Python create zip.py. So we can actually just copy that and do it. I know you could prompt it, but I think to some extent, it's just faster if we do it like that. So let's just do that real quick. So we're gonna open a new console. So I'm not sure if I'm able to manually edit while I'm using the Replit agent, which I guess we can edit the text here for the files. So you should be able to run commands. Let me see. Let's do clear history. So let's do shell here. Let's do Python create a zip.py and it ran. So if we look at this generate zip.py, we see that it gives it a list of the name of the files that are going to be zipped. And in here, we actually don't have the files that would be or that are supposed to be the icons. I guess we're going to have to stick with asking the agent to do it for us. Now, obviously, we could manually add all of the file names in here and that would work, I'm sure. But for trying to keep this as hands off as possible, that is, we do as little technical heavy work as possible. Let's just go ahead and ask the agent. OK, so we just said, can you send me another deployment with all the files I need to use it in Chrome and see with this red is what was changed or removed. And we can see here within the create zip, let's actually close it with the create zip.py. It did go ahead and add those new file names within that script that's supposed to package it all together. So it's nice to see that it picks up on changes that we also noticed, because I think that would have been another area where an error could have occurred. Maybe it just ran the script that it ran previously and forgot about these other changes, but sure enough, we still have it. So that's pretty awesome. So let's download it once more. And this time we're gonna rename the zip as well. We just call it school games 1.3. Okay, so we have 1.3. Let's go to our extensions. Let's remove this. Let's add another one once more. And let's try it out. All right, so it's running and I'm not seeing any changes with the icons. I might have uploaded the wrong one, so that could definitely be on me. So let's just sort these by date added. Let's put it as a list. Okay, no, so this is the most recent one. And we can see we have the icons on here. Yes, it looks like that definitely did not work. So let's do that. All right, so we got this message. I understand you're not seeing the changes, blah, blah. Let's verify the contents. And then it even says, it's gonna get me through reloading the extension in Chrome. Okay, cool. So it's time you can please run the lizip contents.py script. Wow, so that's really neat. It's kind of saying, hey, maybe I messed up. Let's do this. So let's, let's go ahead and do what it tells us. So let's give it the output. So that's nice. Now we're almost collaborating. Those steps are still very straightforward. So love that. So I guess that gave it the information it needed. So I think I'm assuming the main thing verified was that are all the files being listed with they're being zipped. And I was able to verify that when we ran that Python script, and now it's making the changes within the actual visual elements. Like I'm assuming anything with the HTML or JavaScript. So we can see it run now, which is that feature in itself is pretty neat. And now we see some more changes here. It had the comments label. So this is what we had before, right? Where just the letters at the top. Now I'm wondering if these are like, I guess, references to those icons. I'm not too sure. So I think it's pretty neat that it does seem to be getting better at these things. Now that I finished making these changes, you could see here by these highlighted files, the ones that were changed. I think that's uh, obviously as you're making this, you kind of get familiar with the platform. But now we know that if we didn't get yellow files, they weren't modified, but also that goes away fairly quickly like it did right now. So I mean, yeah, I guess you do kind of like got to keep an eye on it, but that's nice. And I really do like this recap that we get at the end of any changes that we make. So yeah, let's go ahead and download it, launch it and you know, let's skip over to that. Cool. So let's load it. Let's go ahead and go into our downloads. Let's check it. School games. And yeah, we have the icons very ugly not aesthetic at all but we have icons and unfortunately we still have the letters so that does need to be resolved because that actually looks worse now than it did before so actually let me try this let's give it a screenshot so this is why i think that 
to some extent, these tools, they're super great. If you're taking a collaborative approach, obviously I'm not getting the exact results that I wanted, but to the app's credit, I wasn't super clear or super, you know, direct on what I want to do. It still saved me more time than going in there on my own, probably because again, I just don't care that much for anything. Any of these front end libraries. Yes, I could go spend some time looking at the files, editing the files, deleting them, testing them, running them. But that kind of becomes its own rabbit hole. And kind of like I said, like this is meant to save you time. It's meant to save you headaches. So I'm still good with this. And to be honest with you, this is probably the first time I'm actually using this to in depth. There's only one other time where I kind of played with a replit agent, but it was really to do something that I already knew how to do myself. So I don't think that was a real test. I, again, I think the strength for this comes if you're able to leverage it as a strength for something you're not good at. So let's actually see where we're at at the board. So we're still in this part, right? It's taking us a little bit longer than expected. This is step two. But once we get the icon on there, I think it'll be solid and I don't even care that the icon is ugly. We can use something else for that. We're not using Replit for the image generation at all. But right now we're just waiting for it, I guess. Okay, so it looks like it finished and it's telling us here that it did create that new zip file, which has been a little bit of a recurring theme on here. But yeah, let's take its word for it and download it and upload it again. And go on here, we're gonna remove this one. Let's check it. Let's just call it SG 1.5. It stands for school games. Cool. Load unpacked. Whoops, didn't unzip it. Cool. So we try it on here. It still looks like it didn't do what we wanted. Yeah, we still have these labels. Now I want to see if it just didn't run the Python script, which if it had, we usually see the output on here. So let's actually just do that on our own. I think it was just that, which again, that's why you do kind of have to still keep an eye out on this. And yeah, so the changes were implemented. Now we don't have that label. Now we just have the icon and now we can click through this. So I think it's a good one. Again, we could use something else for these icons later on, but the main win is there. We want to implement customizable counter labels, which we then went away from. And now we just have icons, which actually that's kind of more like a scope creep on my part because we had an original story or task or requirement, whatever you want to call it. And we ended up changing in the middle of it. That's not ideal. That can make projects run forever. So let's move on to the next one. So add dark mode for better visibility. We're actually not going to do that. I don't see a lot of use for it because we're actually going to pick a certain color palette for it anyway. So we can disregard that. And now let's see. We have create a settings page for more advanced configurations, changing counter limits, adjusting increment, decrement values. That's actually not a bad idea because it would be a little bit of a hassle to have to go and click it each time you make a comment or you send a message to someone. I'd like to think I can keep it top of mind every time I do five or 10 and then just go and update it then there. But also having the option to change that increment would be fine too. So let's do that. So yeah, let's basically just ask it that we want to move on to that step, which we copied. We're going to paste it on here. We're just going to say, let's now move on to this feature. All right, so let's paste the rest here. Now with this one, as long as it works, I think we can leave it. I didn't specify the increments by which I would want to change this and specify what I even want this page to look like. So I don't want to spend too much time on a thing that I mean, I wasn't really specific on it. That's kind of still a nice to have at the end of the day. If I want to have the incremental count, clicking on it five times isn't a big deal either, but we are committed to it. We have it on the list. So let's get some version of that. And here we can see that it's cooking, but we still need to go back. And I guess a big part of it is the appeal, the appearance, the color palette at the end of the day, anything with front end, anything with a user interface, it's always a lot more appealing if it looks good, right? So we definitely want to tackle that part in just a little bit. Okay, so it looks like it finished and it's showing us a very plain looking HTML page. It's saying, is the settings page accessible from the main pop-up? Can you change the default counter value theme notification settings? So I see this settings.html. I'm assuming it's referring to that. Okay, counter value, we can change that. So 
let's do let's do 50 yeah, I guess you can launch the thing and we have the settings, counter value, back to counter. All right, so it's saying understand your encountering errands related to the Chrome storage. I'm going to modify the code to work in both regular web browsers and Chrome environments. This will allow us to test functionality more easily while still maintaining compatibility with the actual extension. I'll update you once the changes are. So I didn't even ask for this. I did see where it doesn't seem to be working on here. I just figured whatever browser extension they have here or whatever environment they have here isn't meant to replicate exactly what Google Chrome is. So I mean, I didn't really care about that, but it's being proactive. I like that so far. This coding assistant is definitely the best one I've worked with. But yeah, pretty cool to see that happen and not even mind the troubleshooting because it just feels like I'm learning a little bit more about the app. So while it's still loading that up, we can actually maybe start working on the icons we want. Like I say, we want that, that school theme, that school aesthetic, maybe even, I guess, the fonts they have. I'm thinking maybe for these icons. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm just not into graphic design like that. So we just want to ask ChatGPT to make me these icons. Maybe we can use those. Maybe we can use Canva. I think Canva has a thing for the color palette. Maybe we can give it a screenshot of school and the logo, and it can give us a nice color palette based on that. And maybe we can give that to ChatGPT for the image generation. I don't know. It's definitely its own little pursuit but i'm just thinking off the top of my head while this thing uh, finishes loading which it still is so while well, it does that let's go ahead and go to ChatGPT. so here in ChatGPT, we're going to be using 4.0 and we're actually just going to give it that same prompt or that same request we gave the replit agent earlier but we're going to leave this out because it doesn't make sense i'm just going to say i need you to create for me three distinct icons for an app here's what the icons represent so yeah let's do that and let's see if canva has something for the color palette but let's check how this is going it looks like it's still working so no problem at all and since we're all over the place we're using all these ais all right yeah, and since we're still using all these different agents we can ask perplexity what would be a good app for either making the icons or you know for the color palette part or we can ask chat gpt we just say that let's just turn on our audio thingy this is also a chrome extension which i didn't make but it's nice do you know what application we could use to get the picture of a website or an app and figure out what a good color palette would be to match it so we can use that to stylize another app and then also what other AI agent or technology would you recommend for creating icons to match that color palette aesthetic? Cool, let's do that. And while ChatGPT thinks, let's go back to our thing here. Can you access localhost page settings? Let's see. I don't think it's actually going to be localhost because we're running this on a browser. If so, please check if you change the default counter value notification settings. Okay, so it's not saving it, but I just want to save it and deploy it. I just think this is an issue related to the actual whatever environment this is running on. I get that it's supposed to be a browser, but I just, I mean, we haven't been testing it like that, and that's fine. I'd rather just test it the way we've been testing everything else. So now let's thinking, let's see what chat GPT said. Okay, Canva. So Canva's AI tool design. Okay, I can help with the palette or for the icons. Oh, interesting. So for color pad, we have Adobe Color. We have this other one called Colors with two O's, cool or a Mid Journey and Dali. Mid Journey was whatever. It's probably gonna have a hard time matching it. But I guess the first thing would be to get the color palette. Sorry, I'm all over the place, guys. Again, design, not my forte at all. But yeah, so let's see where it's at. It's zipping it, no problem. Let's look into, I'm gonna look into these real quick. I'm not gonna show that because that's probably just a waste of time, but okay, this sounds cool. Colorzilla, Chrome Extension, a powerful eyedropper tool that allows you to pick colors from any web page, generate palette from it. I think this sounds cool. We can extract it from websites. Let me go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll be back. All right, cool. So this is what I ended up doing. I just ended up going with Adobe Color. That was like the first suggestion we got from ChatGPT. So pretty much I just uploaded the school logo image. And then what stands out to me the most from like the school pages is it's kind of like a light set of colors they have, but also let me try to switch. 
there's all of this like light yellow tone you see throughout so i guess that kind of sticks out so i put this in here we got the color code here then there's this other one where you could make a palette based on a color i just pasted it on here and we get these other shades of it so i think that's fine we could probably give it to the ai and they'll have a little more clear emphasis on what to go off but again i'm not a designer and this is not a course in design i'm just trying to make something nice and then here let's see it's still asking me if i can verify the theme settings can be changed and successfully saved still hasn't zipped it we wanted it to zip it let's move on past it. i think it might be because we have this open we weren't really using this before it says put yes can you exit that view and zip the new files changes so we're just gonna ask it a little bit more directly that we want to test it again so what does that let's work on our icons for sure okay cool list of zip contents i don't want to overthink it too much let me give it a screenshot of the school page so you can see a theme the colors color palette and maybe it can give us better icons so let's try that so we're just going to take a screenshot of that and take a screenshot of the school page we're going to give to ChatGPT, and ChatGPT is going to be our graphic designer for today, hopefully. And we have that other color palette page. Now we're going to write it a very nice prompt. And just to kind of add the cherry on top, let's show it a picture of what our app looks like or our extension. And we could just be very upfront with ChatGPT, be like, hey, these are the colors. This is the app. This is the extension we want to tie in with the app could you give me some icons that would better match that extension right and then we could also use these screenshots and give it to a replit agent for whenever we start changing the look of it so maybe that's two birds with one stone right so let's get a screenshot of our do we have okay cool and we have this mic so i won't have to type so let's just do that consider the screenshot i gave you that has what appears to be a counter chrome extension with three separate counters in three icons at the top of it. These are the icons that I am trying to replace. Again, as I mentioned in the earlier prompt, one is to represent messages at the far left. At the center, we have the one that represents comments. And at the right, we have the one that represents content creation. The other pictures are meant for you to understand the design, aesthetic, and appeal that this Chrome extension needs to have because it's gonna be complementary to this application. Keep in mind the fonts, the color palettes, and the styling use so that we can create icons that fit that style correctly. And I think that's it. So let's get that to work. And now let's go back to Chrome. It's still editing, so you know I don't even mind the multitasking. We're paying for these AI agents anyway, so might as well get the most out of them. Updated zip, edited contents, cool. Okay, so let's see how ChatGPT is doing. So those icons, they are, they're whatever, right? I don't really care, but I do like this a little bit better. The messages, the envelope, the comments, the bubble. Okay, cool. The content creation, that one's okay. I even like the writing one, which I guess content creation could be writing. I mean, you have to write your script out or your idea and then film it. Filming is part of the process. So I actually like these. So let's see how our app is doing. So now I am noticing that with any prompt we've been giving it, it seems like each action is taking significantly longer. I think, well, it doesn't really log how long it takes. It just says how long we told it. But yeah, this last thing it's working on, it's taking up to four or five minutes, which I don't think that's super ideal. Now, is that better than actually having to go in there and do it yourself? probably but i think for most users for whatever it is you're doing nobody likes to be kept waiting so that might be something where i mean people aren't too happy about but i get it it's still a work in progress and that's fine let's see we changing these settings that's what's being loaded smoother icons really everything else is changing the appearance of the actual application so yeah most of the other things we have they're gonna be done in the replit app but we can take a look at these icons see what the sizes are it's probably a reference to that okay cool so it finished again and we keep getting this message yeah here we see the settings page loading correctly can you change the save settings we've been getting that and this looks very similar to these other 
times where it presents that that is getting a little bit annoying because that's not really what we're asking but we can see here in these prior actions where it zipped it start create update zipped okay cool so now let's just try downloading it one more time and loading it up and go to our extensions remove the old one yes and this is why you learn by doing and making stuff whether it's on your own or with agents because you get in this loop of very repetitive tasks and actions so we have the settings here but like i was saying you get in this loop of tasks and actions so you repeat it you do it and i started this without honestly ever unpacking a chrome extension like that and now look at me i'm editing these i wonder if it's gonna save it i don't care too much if it doesn't because this was just a nice two half i don't even know what enable notifications does but let's try it, it save successfully okay back to counter settings so we're saving the settings but it's not actually doing anything on here but what if we reset it all would it reset to no it does not what if we close it well now it's counting up starting from 100 which yeah definitely not so how about this there is some potential on here but like i said i'm not i was fine with just the reset this dark team this light team it's kind of not that big of a deal so i thought it was going to be an easy win but it's not so we could just put a little what icon can we put we're not going to complete it and we don't want to have it there but it's fine because we'll be able to test out the rollback functionality so let's put a i don't know time maybe there's a little clock yeah like this delayed or something i don't know anyway so let's move on into actually customizing it that's what we really wanted to do so yeah let's go ahead and do that so if we go back to our replit agent, the other thing I was kind of worried about was what's the, you know, control Z you run do for this Because rolling back changes whenever you're making something. If you view something like GitHub or any kind of version control, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to do. And if you're starting out with anything programming related, that's that could also be a little bit of a headache. But I did see here throughout where they have these parts where it says roll back to here. So it is kind of working to set these checkpoints for you. So we'll just go back to the one where we set the icons for the application before we added any of these settings to be changed on it. Okay, create configurations, changing limits. Okay, so yeah, this is when we first asked for it. So let's just go to one before, which is remove label inputs, adjust layout. So we're gonna go roll back here. Let's see what happens there. I haven't tested this out either. Okay, cool. And then hopefully we stop getting these messages. I finished reverting. What should I do differently this time? Okay, cool. Very, very humble for the Ripple agent to, you know, ask what else we want to change, right? Let's give it the same prompt that we gave ChatGPT. And we kind of want to see that we want to adjust the colors, right? And actually, I don't know what I've been typing here. If I have another extension that is voice to text, I just forgot about it. So let me look at let me look where i have that okay right, cool yeah so i forgot i had better diction or what is a better dictation yeah better dictation installed i just forgot about it and haven't used it but yeah let's use that so i keep typing and talking so i might as well just talk and let that be the type right i'm gonna attach some images with color palettes and the styles of a web page that i would like for this chrome extension to match analyze these and find a pattern or a color palette that could fit the aesthetic design and look of the original images attached. Okay, cool. So it typed it in there for us. Isn't that super nice? And now we can attach the images. And actually there's a, I guess there's a mic attachment there. So probably didn't even need to use that extension, but I already paid for it. So there's that. Let's take a look at these. Let's see, was this one? Was it that one? I don't know where my other ones went. That's not it. Let me see. I mean, I think it's this one either. Nope. That's fine. Let's take a couple more screenshots. Okay, cool. So we attach the images with the school page and the color palettes. I think that's a straightforward task. That's where what we said, smaller icons. We already changed the icons, but I think there's more for the appeal of it. I just think the extension itself is a little clunky but yeah we're focused on i guess this part of it now so let's go ahead and do it and let's see how it reacts so it looks like it did the thing where it configured the server to show it and it's asking if it fits the thing correctly so it kind of seems like we're back at that version that was the one prior to rolling back which yeah that's not what we want to do but again this view hasn't really been working but it does seem like it made some changes so yeah let's run the python script one more time 
So we're going to manually export the actual zip file, see if the changes reflect on there. And yeah, because it keeps going to this thing where I guess it tries to show us. And here we do see that it changed the colors on the actual CSS files. So yeah, let's try it out again. So the shell tab is not really loading up. Maybe it's like stuck or not stuck when it's in the middle of a process. Let's just put yes. I do see here that it changed some stuff. If we scroll up within the actual color and styling. But yeah, it looks like it's kind of stuck in that loop of the errors from the Chrome extension and it's trying to fix it, which I guess is fine, but we don't really care about that right now anyway. And it kind of looks like the rollback we tried doing didn't really work, but we created the zip file so i'm just going to download it that's the only thing i really care about right now we're going to remove this okay so let's unpack the latest one okay cool so it did make the changes and actually i really like these colors still simple i like that it changes a little bit when you hover over it the size is here a little too big but yeah actually i don't even think we need these icons Upload logo, this looks fine. Okay, so yeah, I'm liking, I mean, I know it's just the colors that change, but I think the feel of it is already way better for sure. So this is really good. We could probably take off these icons entirely. Maybe if we just write comments right above it, this color is fine. The recent right under it. I guess I don't really know what's more ideal for me, right? Maybe instead of having recent comments, recent messages, we could just have a little X under it kind of like this color xxx and then i mean yeah that way you would know if you want to reset it or not just click down here do we need to reset all probably not but it's still the matter of labeling that i'm not too sure of because these icons that we got over here with chat gpt i do think they're a little bit ugly and i don't know how they would look on here and this is kind of the problem that i'm talking to you guys about right this whole design thing big headache for me not. I'm enjoying it because of the Replit agent. I'm not enjoying the process of trying to make these decisions or that's just not my cup of tea. But no, that's good. I guess one more thing. I might change the border around here to be this yellow kind of color specifically. I think that would look nice. And that's about as creative as I can get for you guys. Yeah, because I'll make it stand out. I don't really like this. Just It almost just looks like white with a very like gray around it. Here we can have the school logo. So we could actually redo that in camera. It says school and then like a 300 across it would be nice. But yeah, it's still, we might go to the original one, just keep comments, messages, content. All right, so this thing keeps getting stuck like you guys saw uh, in the morning, something different because it's a different day now. So I can't take a break. I was working on some other stuff, but this is the point where we're at just to kind of like recap for myself and we're kind of like stuck in this loop with the replit agent where it keeps trying to deploy it and it has errors and then it's just not really doing what we want it to and we could just be a little bit annoyed and keep trying to get it to run again but actually what i'm thinking we could do now is we're coming along pretty far we start out with this just a very basic very bland idea we're kind of looking a little bit better here in terms of colors and styling still not beautiful but this is enough for me to kind of get the creative juices flowing what we're gonna do is we're gonna reload this we're actually not gonna worry too much about this repo itself and here in lucid charts we could probably do this better in figma but we can just take a screenshot of this and start playing with these colors and prototype one this is prototype two We'll actually just manually make prototype three here. And then we can just start another Replit project with Replit agent and tell it, hey, I want to make this counter. You know, here are the colors. Here's a screenshot of the prototype. We can even give it this same file structure. And then there's one more thing. So instead of focusing on being 100 outreaches and 100 comments and 100 yeah, minutes of content per day, it's all been switched where the newer version should be 100 minutes of each rather than 100 iterations. And this is more to focus on quality rather than quantity because I could see how you have limited time and you try to do this. You end up maybe spamming and that's not such a good look either. So we might be in the path of scope creep where now we actually have to turn all these into timers or we have the option to switch back and forth between a counter and the timer. I don't know, that's a cool new challenge, but let's move on to the next part where, like I said, this is prototype one, currently what we have here, let's take a screenshot of this. 
is prototype 2 for the sake of well, the length of this video and my editor that's gonna help me edit it i think i'll just do this really quick and then come through and show you what the next version is supposed to look like right so give me a second maybe i'll record it maybe i'll speed run it I don't know, but yeah. All right, so it took a little bit longer than expected as usual, because what doesn't write, but this is where we're at. And just to go over with you real quick, some of the changes that I want to make, right? Here we have the title, it's a little bit bigger, it's simpler. We don't have to worry about uploading icons or logos. And then I still have these three sections, again, comments, messages, content. And here they all have their own little X to reset each counter uh, individually. But I also want to implement the feature where if you click this icon as you can see here there's like a little bit of a kind of like a timer icon and this one's like a checklist icon where basically it will switch back and forth between it being a timer or it being like just a click counter that you can click and it counts each time we'll see how easy or how difficult that is but that's kind of what i want to do and again i did all this here just with the lucid charts you can see these icons here they're just squares here i think i just cut this out made a copy of it and then cropped it these icons you can find here within the little icons page or icon section you have here. And yeah, just kind of like match the colors. So and I guess if you're to UI design, you could probably do this in Figma. I've never really messed with Figma. I made this in Lucid Charts. This was all done within this app. I've heard Figma is so good for these kind of things. I don't use Figma. Don't want to spend the time learning it because again, we want to rely as much as we can on AI. But what I was going to say next is that this is still such an improvement for me in terms of what we started with. This was just the bare bones of what I wanted and what I gave the AI. And again, with as clear directions as I could, this is what we ended up getting back after some tweaking, which wasn't ideal, but just kind of seeing the color scheme, seeing that it was organized. This really just gave me more ideas on what I actually wanted. And this is the version that we're at right now, which again, even if this thing that AI gives us, which of course we wanted it to be nice and it wasn't nice off the bat, it still allowed for that creativity to come forth, which I think is really where the value comes from in terms of AI tools. They're meant to assist you and really help you focus on what you're good at rather than just doing the whole thing for you. But like I said, super excited. Let's move on. Let's go back to Replit Agent and then we'll get started on building this new here. I'm calling it version 3.0, even though we don't even have a complete version, but we'll get to it. We'll give it a screenshot. We'll ask it to make it and we'll troubleshoot it as we go along. So again, let's actually go ahead and start a new project. Here we have the Replit Agent option and let me see. It's not letting me use the mic right here. So I use my extension. And by the way, if you're wondering what I'm using for the voice to text, it's called Vetter Dictation. I saw another YouTuber use it. So I thought I would get it too. I think it was like 20 bucks for the license. So I don't mind it. But yeah, let's go ahead in here. Let's give it our screenshots first. So let's take a screenshot of this. I'm gonna attach this here. And then since we already have some of the coding structure, well, I was thinking of giving it this structure, but I don't think we're gonna need to, just a screenshot of this, that might be overkill. So I think we just leave the screenshot and we'll start describing what we want. So let's think about that for a minute. We can actually just go to our points that we have over here. Okay, these were just goals. So yeah, I guess we should mention the persistence for whenever we close the browser. I think the screenshot does allow the value for it. So I guess I'll just give it a shot. I want to create a Google Chrome extension as depicted in the screenshot I attached this extension is meant to hold three different types of counters, one for comments, one for messages, and one for content. Okay, so now we can explain, let's see, we wanna make sure that, should we give it both parts of the counter and the timer? I guess we can start describing that, why not? And then we can troubleshoot it. For each of the counters that's within this extension, you will have the option to toggle back and forth between a clicking counter, that is every time you click it, you will increment by one and also the timer counter, which if you switch to that option, you'll be able to start a timer that counts down from 60 minutes. And at the bottom, you'll also have an X to reset the counters individually. Okay, cool. So I think it's pretty good. We talked about the counters, we talked about the timers and we said where we could toggle it, right? Okay. I think that's pretty good. And I think the screenshot should speak for itself. 
Let's see how good it goes this time. Okay, so here's the proposition he gave us. I've created a plan for your rule 300 Chrome extension that includes three independent counters with toggle functionality between click counting and 60 minute timer modes. The extension will match the design shown in your screenshot and persist counter states between sessions. Would you like to proceed with this plan? Build initial prototype and for the customization, let's see, add customizable timer durations. We can do that later. Implement notification when the timer completes. Well, that's pretty neat. Add statistics tracking for daily, weekly usage. Create a dark mode theme option. So love all those options it's proposing. But again, let's start with a solid prototype. I don't want to get stuck in that loop like we did earlier, where I was just trying to correct something, an error that it detected, which I don't even care because we're deploying it manually anyway. So approve plan and start. And let's see it go to work. And I do really like this feature where it's showing you all the files one by one as it builds them. And I definitely like how it shows you the directory over here. I don't know it just has a really cool futuristic vibe, whatever you want to call it. And while it does this, I don't know if I've iterated this point. It's cool that AI is doing all these things, but like you guys have seen this product still being tested, still going to give you some errors. If you're planning on getting into tech, you want a job in computer science, something like that, this is going to be so helpful to get you to make things. And then you can break down this project in a way that you can understand it, tinker with it. And that would be super valuable. So don't just completely rely on this doing everything for you. Definitely play with it, break it, recreate it, all that good stuff. So it looks like it's almost done. Okay, cool. So it says it's done building it. Let's ask it again for that Python script to zip it and deploy it on Chrome. Can you give me a Python script that will package this in a zip file so I can download it locally and then upload it to my Google Chrome browser? Okay, cool. So it's making us the Google Chrome file or the Google Chrome script for that, which we already had before, but you know, sometimes it's a little bit of trouble to go and copy paste yourself. So here it did for us. Okay, great. It says successfully create extension package. So we should be able to just download it. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll unzip it. We'll just call it school 3.1. Cool. And then we have to go to our extensions. Cool. So it's just Chrome colon slash slash extensions. And then we're going to load unpacked. We're going to select that. And that's the old one. So let's see, it's the old one we had. And let's go look at this one. Okay, cool. So it looks really close to what we had here. Yeah, even I think the color palette's a little different, but that's fine. When we click it, cool, it goes up. Now it's not toggling. I think it's fine. Each of the X's works here. Okay, so this is great. Oh, this is the toggle. What? That is crazy. So yeah, even the timer is running. All right, so this is really cool. Aside from the formatting here, I guess it's changing size because of the size of the text or the space is team, but this is like 70, 80% there. We can start the timer. Okay, cool. And how do I pause it? Okay, so I click it. I didn't pause it. It's not super ideal, but we can fix that. Okay, anyway, we switch between the timer and let me see. That's running and we start it. Okay, cool. Same thing with this one. I guess if you X'd it, that would be the main thing. Okay, cool. So it does look a little bit funky, I know, but you can see right here. Well, if you look in this area right here, you can tell that we have the little icon to switch between, I guess, the timer or the counter, which is great. And as soon as you click it, it will start the timer. If you click X, it just goes back to the counter, which isn't ideal, but okay, we should fix the functionality first, and then we can finish with the appearance. So let's just give it a screenshot of what it looks like. So what are the things we want to fix on here? Let's just get some of these items. We're kind of like restarting, not really, but what do we need to get here? Let's write that down. So when I switch the timer, when I click the square, I should also be able to pause the timer. Okay, so that's one thing. What would be the next? So the next thing would be when I have the timer option on, if I click the X for the timer, it should restart the timer back to 60 minutes. Okay, so I think those are the main things that are maybe not a spray deal with it. Toggling back and forth works and I actually like that it runs. Okay, 55 seconds. Let me go back to this one. What happens if we go back to it? Okay, so I guess if you switch out of it, it almost seems like it pauses it. When we click X, we went back to zero and the timer restarted again. And if we click the timer, it's not pausing. So that all checks out. Now, as far as the counter, 
the counter seems to be working the way it's supposed to okay so yeah the main thing right now is the timer which honestly it wasn't even the original idea we wanted so that's good that it's already doing what it's supposed to then we also want to tell it after you've made these fixes run the python script to create a new zip file okay so it summarized what i wanted pretty good modify timer functionality to add pause resume on click and reset to 60 minutes when x is clicked in timer mode so it's an even better more clear way of wording what i want to do uh, so definitely love that okay so it looks like it's trying to run it within replit which is fine i think if you're trying to make something with this app and they're promoting it that i could do that that's completely fine but i don't necessarily like that i'm being forced to use their environment i'm fine just zipping and downloading it but let's just indulge it i guess just clicking on the timer display a resume timer is it clicking paused indicator when time is paused does clicking x reset to six seconds cool so where do we have our extension okay so let's go to our pop-up.html clicker works let's switch to the timer timer starts clicking it looks like that paused it and clicking it again resumed it that's cool let's pause it again cool what about pausing multiple ones okay cool so they're working individually so now let's reset it we'll reset it back to 60 clicking it did not restart it that's a little bit annoying that's interesting so if we go back let's see let's resume this one that one's fine let's say we're running a timer we're gonna click the x on it so we're back at 60 but clicking it does not make the timer reset again wait did it maybe i was just a little bit impatient okay clicking it yeah so clicking it after clicking the x is not restarting it so what if we pause it and then click the x or what about so we start the timer it's running what if we click the x does that restart it and keep it running just clicking it resume it no okay so that's a problem we want to fix so okay i'm trying to think out loud but that's also so challenge for me i guess so let's voice that so from the points it gave us this clicking timer display pause or zoom the timer yes it does that is there a pause indicator when timer is paused i don't necessarily see it but you know i don't even care about the pause indicator it might just be hidden behind some of the elements what i do want to fix is just that clicking the x and not being able to restart it after i click the x to restart the timer even though the timer does reset back to 60 once i try clicking the timer again it won't start the countdown so i think even despite those little issues i think it's just going to come down to making some changes just to some if statements within the actual javascript for it but other than that it does look really good in the formatting here i think we just need to make sure all the elements stay a consistent size and stay inside this i guess outline or border whatever you want to call it and that should be good to go okay cool so it looks like it redeployed it again let's check it out here okay so our timer is running so we're gonna pause the timer we paused it we reset the timer let's click our timer okay cool so it did start let's do it in this one on starting reset it when we reset it it stays at 60 we want to click it and we want it to start again i wonder it did it over here i wonder if i'm just not seeing the pause element okay so we reset it so right there it's not running okay so i think there is some pause element somewhere that i'm not seeing that does allow it or maybe doesn't allow it to resume let's see if this works so we have the timer running here and that's well, you can see the little numbers on there let me zoom in i know i can look through the files but here we get to see it live in action so what if we pause it it's paused right there reset button do we see anything with a resume what if we reset it so where did we click that it does restart it sometimes and sometimes it doesn't well i guess you have to double click it okay cool so i don't see anything for like a resume other than double clicking and maybe that's what it was before and i just didn't notice but that's it's fine i guess i guess we could leave it at that i think maybe that wasn't super intuitive and obviously i missed it but it works and that's all we really want okay so now that this is working we can pause it and then we get to restart this timer we get to switch back between the timer and the counter i want to make sure that this doesn't do this ugly thing i think i'm fine if these stay this size or maybe we could try it so that the border adapts to these changes because for sure it's sticking out like that is pretty ugly so let's send a screenshot of that 
notice how the border or layout is not adapting to the changing sizes of the counters and timers inside. Also notice how the title is not centering based on those changes either. Please fix this. So I think it feels like this is going really well. Some of the other features that I mentioned sounds really nice, like kind of like the weekly tracker, kind of like if you want like a little report and then you can put that in your Excel sheet or however you're keeping track of it. Ideally, sure, we could integrate that to maybe its own database or maybe use like a make.com scenario to tie it into that Google sheet, but it's probably a little bit too fancy right now. I really just wanted to play with the Replit agent. And even though maybe some of you guys aren't into this whole 300 thing with school, to be honest with you, last week or the last few days when I originally had this version, this was actually really helpful to me. And I think that's the real reason why I stuck around to getting it to this state, because even though this is good enough for me just to keep track, it's a useful, simple tool. I really wanted to make something that would be nicer to look at and shareable with you guys that are going to be using it or I mean, hey, I think maybe this would also be inspiration for you to go ahead and do your own thing with the Replit agent. Okay, so it looks like it finished. Is the layout consistent across all cards? I don't know. Let's see. So let's see what happens if we change it. Do the counter displays maintain their sizes when switching between timer and counter modes? Is the title properly centered? Let's see. Let's refresh this actually. I don't see anything here. I know I made some changes. I don't know that it repackaged it and deployed. So let's say that. I'm not sure. Could you run the Python script and repackage it and redeploy the application? Okay, cool. So it looks like it relaunched it. Let's check it, see if it made those changes. We could see it's still sticking out, but something I want to do is just stop it here and then run it one more time. And here it's asking us to verify some of the older functionality, which it was fixed. There wasn't really a problem before, but Let's see. So let's open a web view. Okay, so this doesn't fix that. So let's try downloading it and try running it on our Chrome browser. So let's go here, load unpacked. So we have it here. And let's see, we still have this getting pushed out. And then, well, and I think this is a new problem where now clicking the X doesn't restart the timer. Okay, so that's interesting. Cool. So this looks, this one that we have here, I don't think it actually ran the Python file. I think that's the same version of the other one. So let's actually run that real quick. And so this should be what zips in all the files. So let's just go to our console real quick. We're going to do Python package extension, package extension.py. Let's delete this. So I'm spelled Python. Okay, cool. So we have that here. Let's download that. So we have it here. Let's actually just delete this 3.2 that we didn't even use. So just move to trash. Call this school 3.2. Okay, cool. Let's go to extensions. Cool. We have it right here. So now the X just automatically restarts it. We don't even have to double click it. Uh, that was intentional, but that's okay. But we still have this problem, right? Where elements are going out of their frame. So I don't know where my screenshot went. All right, so I need to get rid of some of these old ones. Okay, so it's still out of the frame. Let's tell it that. So we just tell it, pay attention to the red and or maroon border. Notice how the timer and counter elements are sticking outside of it. Notice how the title is not centered either. Please fix this styling. All right, so here I kind of uh, repeated myself, but that's okay. I can delete that. So if we go back to progress. Let's see. Maybe I try saying red or maroon border because maybe that will give it a little bit better context as far as what to fix. It really just seems like the counters are layered on top of it, not inside of what's supposed to be the border. So maybe it just needs to adjust that or maybe the way those elements are set up inside that other part of it. But if we look at progress, just that it did pop up CSS. So we see it changed some of the width on here. Okay, cool. And it refreshed it here. Okay, yeah, so it did change the border a little bit. Okay, so let's look at where we have row of 300. So it's still not fixing it. And I'm tempted to just get rid of the border altogether. Because again, it seems like these, the title and the border is just very much stationed and it's not adapting to the changes in sizes of the containers. So maybe that's how we need to rephrase that. It seems to me like both the title that says rule of 300 
and the maroon or brown or red border, whatever you want to call it, seem to be stationary and not adapting to the changes of sizes to the timers and the counters. So while the comments, messages, and content timer and counters do change sizes and the elements inside them seem to adapt, it also seems to me like they are not adapting with the rest of the app. All right, so I guess you're not supposed to click around when you're using the voice app. But yeah, you see here the X and everything else inside here seems to be centered, even though this, we still need to fix that icon actually. But first is the border. Okay, so we keep getting this message about just to check if the whole thing with the counter is working as properly. Maybe it's because we don't verify that it's kind of going in that loop. But let's go ahead and restart it. And then if we're not able to fix that whole centering part or we still keep going on that loop, I think we could definitely implement just trying to figure out what the error is or how to fix it a little bit quicker, even just using ChatGPT. So let's do that. Okay, this is time for pause and resume when clicking the display. So we already know it does that. Thus clicking reset to 60 and start counting in timer mode. Okay, yes, it was. Is the layout responsive with proper spacing? So that's what we're trying to fix. Are there any errors in the console? So we're about to find out. And it looks like it is running. So let's check it out one more time. Okay, so pop up HTML. And okay, so if we shrink it, I guess it is going to go out of the border, but these do look like they're wider now. Seems like it is changing the size. So I guess the whole thing here is if there's enough space, everything will stay centered, but it's when you try to make this smaller that you get this error. Okay, I'm not sure. So let's run the Python script one more time. Let's close this. Let's go to our shell. We're just gonna do Python package. Actually, I don't even know which one it's supposed to be. So let's delete this one. Let's delete that one. Let's try that one, but it's okay. And let's go to our extensions. Let's delete all these. All the rule of 300 ones. Move. We don't have any on there. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna package it again. Python package extension. Let's download this. So once we download that, we're gonna open it. And in here, let's rename it school 3.3. Even though maybe it didn't change, but that's okay. Let's unzip this one more time. What extensions, load unpack. Let's go ahead and do downloads 3.3, select. Okay, let's try it out with 300 right there. All right, so why is it so small? And when did the dimensions change? So that's probably the worst one. I don't think we changed anything on here. Is there a way to increase the size of this? Or am I like zoomed in or something? Okay, so let's ask it. Let's just say yes, everything works. Could you tell me? We gotta have the extension. Actually restart it. What the dimensions of the Chrome extension are gonna be once I click it. Okay, seeing that the dimensions are approximately 500 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. Maybe it's something I edited, I don't think so. So let's ask it, what file would these dimensions be found in? And how can I make sure these dimensions match when I load and unpack the extension on my browser? So kind of like I was saying earlier, this is more of a coding assistant. This isn't a make your app for you right away. So it's definitely gonna be more of a collaborative approach once you start working with these and definitely as you get better at whatever kind of development you're doing, the easier you'll get. Okay, the dimensions are in the pop-up.css file and it has the padding, the margin, and base width, flexible base height. Okay, cool. To ensure consistent dimensions when loading the extension, the extension will automatically size based on content. Chrome handles pop-up sizing automatically. If you want to force specific dimensions, you can add a fixed width height to the body element pop-up CSS. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's say, yes, please add fixed dimensions for consistent sizing. And maybe that was the issue all along. So we see here in pop-up CSS, it changes the width from auto to actually setting the width and height. And then it's changing the JavaScript file right here. And looks like it did it restart it. Kind of looks like it did. So 500 by 400 pixels. Is the layout fixed at 400 by 500 pixels uh, consistent with spacing? Does this timer pause and zoom on click? So it's coming up wide. 
So that's fine. If the timer is changing size, but I don't really care about that. If these on the outside don't change, does the timer resume on click? Okay, so let's let it run. So I don't know why it's going to 59, 59 and then it just stops. That might be something with their browser here. Just clicking X reset to 60, it does. What about the counter? Yep, sets it back to zero. Okay, cool. Are there any Chrome storage errors in the console? Well, I see a big red 82 up here. We're definitely getting some errors on there, but you know what? Let's not worry about those right now. So let's go ahead and go back to our shell. We can just press the up arrow if you don't want to type the command again. It's just python package extension.py. So that makes us a new one. So it's going to be this one, 1106. Let's download 1106. I know we've done this a ton of times, but this is going to be good practice for everyone. Oh, I guess it unzipped it for me. That's completely fine. So let's remove this extension. Remove from Chrome. Let's go to our extensions. Load unpacked. Let's go to downloads. This is the most recent one. Select, open it. Let's try it out. Okay, cool. So it's still doing that limit. I'm wondering if it's maybe there's a limit for the size of the Chrome extensions, maybe the way that's handled. But if we pause it, restart it, it starts again. That's good. If we switch back. Okay, so the timer's running. What happens if we go to the counter? Okay, so it seems like if we go back to the counter and then back to the timer, it's gonna reset it each time, which I don't think it's ideal because that's why we have an X to be able to just straightforward about when we wanna reset it. But earlier we had this as flexible with, maybe that was causing some issues, but we're still kinda at the same spot, right? Where these elements aren't loading up the way we want them to. And I guess, well, everything looked nice here, but I guess if we shrink this here, well, we're in the same spot. I guess I got my hopes up since it loaded it full page right away. I guess if the actual panel where the Chrome extension is loaded isn't big enough, it's just going to push everything out to the side. So I'm wondering if there are any limits to the size of a Chrome extension. So let's ask it that. And I'm pretty much sold on, we're just going to switch to chat GPT to fix this because this might just be a Chrome thing. This may not be a replit thing, but yeah, just uh, little details, right? We're like 80% there. Is there a limit to the size of either the width or the height for Chrome extension widgets? Okay, so it's telling us here that there's a limit, 800 by 600 pixels. Currently we set them to 500 by 400, which is fine. So what if we do this? What if we have a set height and width for the widget and we also have a set height and width for all of the elements inside the counter. Can we create a set height for everything inside the counter, including each of the counters inside of it? That is the comments, the messages, and the content. Make sure these all fit in in a nice way inside of the main size constraint. And if this doesn't do it, again, I'm not saying it's the agent, I'm just saying for the output I'm expecting. It's obviously something that we're missing, so the goal here is to make things fast. This is still faster than having to take a whole UI UX course, sure. It's definitely faster than having to learn to program from scratch. But if we can use other tools to speed this along, then why not? Okay, so it looks like it finished up, but man, it's still doing this thing. Okay, let's stop it. Let's restart it. Okay, so we're still getting this error. If it's doing this constraint thing here then it's probably gonna do when we download it so i don't even want to bother with that anymore but let's say you're at this point too right let's say you're kind of working with one of these agents that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you and you kind of get stuck and you don't really know where to start so what do we have here we have available to us all of the files which we have access to right here on the left and maybe even if you don't know where to start how we do it is just take a screenshot and now switch to a different model. Maybe you have Claude, maybe you have ChatGPT. Either way, just start asking questions and just go with the flow, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's get a really nice screenshot. Let's close this. Let's put this over here, actually. So we'll take a screenshot of this and we'll show it the file configuration and we'll also show it the error. So actually, since I know a constant question that people may have is which paid thing should I use for coding? Which one's better? Some people scream in here with ChatGPT, others say Cloud AI. And since we have a very well-defined task and a very well-defined issue, I figured why not just test both and just paste 
the same context, the same text to each one of them, see which one gives us the most useful answer, the most beginner friendly answer, and we can go from there. So let's start with ChatGPT and then we'll just copy it and paste it. I'm having an issue where this particular Chrome extension widget that I'm making is not abiding to the constraints for the sizing whenever I open it. As you can see here, some of the elements overextend past what I want to be the border. Can you help me fix this? Here's a screenshot of the problem as well as the file directory. So we'll just copy and paste that. And then let's drag and drop our screenshot. And we're gonna give it to both. And we're off to the races. Okay, so Claude is off to the races, going pretty fast. It's telling us right away um, what we should do or what we should have to fix it, which to be honest with you, we already have the files. It's already giving us a layout for it. Okay, so that's kind of neat how this looks and we can actually interact with it. It's just, uh, what are these called? I forgot what these are called, widgets or whatever their version of coding, that's really nice. So it's giving us a proper solution. I kind of like this, that's not in line, that's fine. I can just copy and paste this in my CSS file. So maybe I will do that. So let's read over this one real quick. Okay, I've created a new layout that addresses the key issues, fixed with the body and status Chrome extension, blah, blah. Okay, so to implement this, that's what really matters. Replace your existing popup.html. The CSS including the HTML, we can move it to popup.css file. If you prefer it, make sure any JavaScript function that you have for the counters and reset buttons is properly connected. So these are the parts that if you're trying to find a quick solution, well, yes, we can copy and paste this code, but more than likely what's going to happen is it's going to break some of the other things, right? Maybe we haven't talked about it in a lot of detail, but you can see these are, there are three pop-up files, right? You have pop-up HTML, pop-up JS, and pop-up CSS. So just to give you a very bare bones breakdown of it, popup.html, which has all the HTML code. These are all the elements you see on the browser. All these tags you see, the div, the h2, this is basically saying these are all separate things that you're gonna see in the browser. Okay, cool. And you can see there, you know, they all have names. Okay, that's fine. Popup CSS is gonna be the styling. So for all those things you see on the web page, what size are there, what size are the fonts, what colors are there, this is what customize the appearance of those web page elements. And then you have your popup.js, JS standing for JavaScript. So this is gonna be all of the JavaScript code, which basically says all of the things on this web page or Google Chrome extension have a certain behavior. When you click this thing, this other thing happens. In our case, when we click it, a timer starts or a counter goes off, or we switch between the timer or we restart it. All that logic for what's supposed to happen when you interact with the elements in pop-up HTML and pop-up CSS is being defined in this. So these are all kind of working together, right? That's kind of the problem right now with Cloud's response that it's giving us a solution for fixing the appearance, but it's not necessarily gonna play nice with everything else. We can try it out, but first let's read a ChatGPT's response. Okay, so to fix width and height for pop-up container HTML to ensure the main container has a defined width and height to prevent expanding beyond the border. Okay, so it's telling us what we might need to do in order to fix this and it's giving us suggestions. But here is the goal part. It says, could you share your pop-up.css and pop-up HTML files? It will help pinpoint and adjust specific styles for an accurate fit. So I would say this response is already better because it's not assuming what the code is gonna be. It's not trying to guess it like Claude. And mind you, maybe that was on me. Maybe I should have said, you know, tell me exactly what to do or for a beginner programmer or whatever you want. But this is definitely the road to, I guess, the better direction. Here are the questions I got from Claude. I don't think you can see it because my face is in the ways. Let me move that. Would you like me to make adjustments to the size and layout? Also, I noticed you have a pop-up.js file. Would you like help connecting JavaScript functionality? So those are good suggestions as well. But mind you, if somebody doesn't want to deal with the coding or just wants to make the thing, I could see this road leading to more frustration. Let's move away from this. And we're just going to use ChatGPT. Cool. I know I was going to test them, but since they're kind of going different directions, doing either one of them is going to take a little bit of time. I don't want to waste 
time doing one that I already think is probably not going to give us a solution. So we're just going to do this and we're going to with ChatGPT. Cool, cool. Nice. And I think that's the other nice thing about ChatGPT that you kind of get to see or test out two different responses. So obviously we're not going to read through all of the code, but we can read through the suggestions. It's just adjustment set fixed dimensions for pop-up window ensure pop-up itself doesn't exceed specified dimensions in the body set max width, max height, container adjustments. Container currently has padding. These could contribute to the overflow issues. Consider reducing the margin, grid layout, card adjustments. To ensure the counter card elements stay within boundaries, reduce the padding or just hide as needed. So for the second one, let's say it seems like the overflow is just like due to the container and counter card. The first one's talking about padding being the issues. This one is citing specific containers and the way they're set up. So it's saying to restrict the width in the container and counter card. Your code has with auto, which is what we're looking at for the container, which allows it to go beyond the intended area. Okay, so that's kind of what we're talking about, right? That it seemed like some of those elements were able to go past the other one. So I kind of like this a little bit better just from this description. Okay, so explanation changes within height on body, ensures no excess, reduce padding margin, adjusted counter card and padding, font size adjustment, uh, container width, set max. Okay, cap reduction. So I want to try this one out. I wonder if, okay, sometimes if you click which one you prefer, we'll get rid of the other one, but we can copy the code. So let's copy this and keep in mind this is the CSS file. We're going to go back to our project. Just going to paste it, delete and paste it all in here. Click save and let's restart it. Okay, cool. So let's click it. Let's go to our HTML. It's still doing the thing on here. So if we do it like this, I guess it does constrain it. Okay, let's download it and try it out. Delete the files. Okay, so we're going to download that. And there we have it, 13448. Let's remove the old extension. Let's do load unpack, download. Okay, cool. We got it right here. And let's check it out. Okay, cool. So full width, nothing being constrained. If we click this, it's going up. I don't see the little thing to switch to the counter now, so that's one problem. But we fixed something else right now. We can make sure that the size looks good. So that was one problem we have. But then we came about to having another problem. We can see that the restart thing is way up there. We do not want that there. I'm trying to see if the other ones are somewhere else throughout the page. So if we go to inspect. So inside the div for the counter card, we have the toggle. These should all have one, two. Okay, so it looks like they're all piled in together. Okay, so let's just ask, what happened to my toggle element that refreshes the counter whenever I click it? There's supposed to be three of them and they're supposed to be under each of the letters. That is one under messages, one under content, and one under comments. All right, so it's giving us some suggestions. I'm pretty sure they're good, but right now we're not doing it from the perspective of how much can and should we edit the code on our own. Right now we're doing it from the basically hold my hand perspective. So let's ask it to do that. I want you to hold my hand during this process consider the original files i had passed to you in the first request of changes that i wanted which was i didn't want the sizing of the counter extension to change but with that in mind i didn't want the positioning of anything else within the extension to change from where i originally had it yes some things were originally flexible but now we don't want anything flexible we want this extension to be one size. We want to be able to use it and we want to make sure everything is positioned correctly. All right, so not saying let's go step by step. Cool. Okay, so at least it's giving us the elements. I guess we can maybe do a little bit of copy pasting. I don't know. Let's go to our pop-up CSS containers. This is the only container on here. Let's look it up. Well, yes, it is. So I guess we can replace this. So it can look any different. Max width, okay, cool. So they changed that. So counter grids, counter card. Wow, so change the good chunk here. Let's see, counter grids, counter card, mode toggle. So let's get rid of these. So we're gonna replace counter grids, counter card, 
cool delete that paste it in here h2 i guess that stays the same smooth dot toggle counter display and reset button so we get rid of these i don't know if we're supposed to get rid of the h2 so let's stop this let's save this let's just control s to save it whoa i think i press some kind of shortcut well, I guess you could do explain with AI or modify with AI. Cool. I don't know. They had that feature, which is pretty similar to cursors. So that's kind of cool. Wish they had advertised a little more, but we're here now. So am I saving? I'm pressing control S to save it. I don't even know if that's for sure how you do it. Yeah, I guess it does save up. Anyway, let's run it and let's load it. And let's see, we have our, okay, cool. So we have a zone there. I don't even know if we had it earlier. Let's delete that and let's package it one more time let's download our package unzip it 5614 remove it okay so i'm sure by now you're starting to see how this can get a little bit repetitive and even though we're using ai you see these constant steps where we have to be error checking testing it even if you weren't using ai you'd be doing some version of this obviously if you were really good at html css then you probably would have figured it out by now that's supposed to be the benefit right that you don't have to go out of your way to get super good at that and the real learning i think is going to happen is once you kind of get this done then you can basically play with it a little bit more oh there it is yeah so once you get it done you can have a finished product you can start breaking it apart you can start making your own changes and then just breaking it on your own rather than letting AI break it. Okay, cool. So we finally at a point where we have the timer switch and we have these elements. So we click the timer, it paused it. We switch back to the counter, we count up and we switch back to the timer. It restarted the timer, not super ideal, but I think ChatGPT could fix that. But for sure, I like the fact that it looks the way it's supposed to, Things aren't crammed up all the way to the right. We can toggle between counter and timer. If we click the timer, like we did right there, it'll start the timer. If I click it again, it'll pause it. If I click the X, it'll restart the timer by default. If I switch back to the count, go back to the timer, the timer restarted, didn't like that, but the counter does save. So it makes sense that we would want to change the logic to change it back and forth between the timer and the counter doesn't restart the timer. Okay, so let's do that. Let's actually go back to the replit agent. I know we had kind of given up on a little bit, but now I'm really curious about this feature where you can actually just highlight in as to modify with AI. I hadn't noticed that that might have been a little bit better than just asking it with the replit agent. Like I said, um, I repeat for a whole year, so I'm gonna use it as much as I can and get the most out of it. So let's go back to that. But where we're at right now, super cool, super useful win. Oh wow, it's saying that we paused it. Interesting. I don't know where that paused. I remember I saw that somewhere where it was showing whenever we paused it. I don't know why it doesn't, almost kind of weird that it didn't show up until now. But let's say we click pause and we exit out and then we actually let's pin it. We click it again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, cool. So it says pause. And I click it and unpause it. That pause looks very ugly. We might get rid of it at some point. Like I said, that's why I love all this kind of styling. A lot of fun. But we're at a good spot. Well, I guess we still have to have the persistence in the browser. Do I really care about that? I mean, the point of keeping track of this. I mean, these are things you're supposed to be doing daily. So we might add that little chart that's it's suggested to keep track of metrics weekly daily as a percentage do we want to change the timer those are all a lot of adjustments we could make but we're pretty far it's getting better we're getting a better flow so let's continue with it okay so let's go ahead and go back to fixing this part where if we switch back and forth between the counter and the timer we don't want to restart the timer. if i switch between the counter and the timer the timer is restarting back to 60 each time I want to be able to change this so that if I switch back and forth, the timer is not restarted. Okay, so it's changing the popup.js and it looks like it was a pretty quick change. It's restarting and we just got this. Do we already have this file? I'm wondering if it zipped it up again. No, that's one we already had. So let's actually just delete this and repackage it. Whoops, I downloaded it, but I know it's giving us a way to run it here, but we keep seeing 
uh, behavior that's not really consistent to what we expect in Chrome. So we'll, we're just gonna do it manually. Okay, so we have our script, download, open it. Okay, 51. So now let's go ahead and remove the old one and let's go ahead and load it again. Okay, cool. So we have it on here now. Counting, resetting, switching to timer will automatically stop, start the timer. And if we switch, let's see, we're at 53 seconds. We're gonna switch to counter and we're gonna count up. What was it, 52, 53 seconds, 51. Okay, so it didn't restart it. It actually paused it. Do we want it paused in the background? That's interesting. I'm not sure about that, but I definitely didn't want it restarted. So it looks like switching between the counter. Okay, so we're at 29 seconds. 27. If we switch out of the timer and back to the counter, it seems like that will restart our counter. So we're at 18, then it was a 20 seconds, to a 20 seconds, so pause the timer. I also don't want to restart the counter. So let's tell it that. Does the timer have a value? Same when switching modes, just clicking on the display, pause, resume the timer. Just clicking X, reset 60 minute timer mode. Are there any storage errors on the console? That's a good question. So let's go here. Okay, so we see this change we switch between the timer that looks like it's working fine so yeah basically that thing where we also don't want the counter to reset this is working fine now the only problem now is that when i switch out of the counter and into the timer the counter is also resetting back to zero and i don't want this to happen i also want the counter value to stay even if i'm switching between two different modes so another thing i'm noticing is that even if it doesn't make very big changes, maybe with each call, it does have to review all the files, but like for this, it's just gonna, I'm sure it's just gonna edit the popup.js and it's making this change to this one file. Well, it does seem to be going through all of them. I mean, through the entire file, so I can see how that might take a little bit of time. But what happened last time too was as we added more and more things to the app, Anytime we make a request, it would just take longer. So I think that's another thing that can be a little bit frustrating. So let's delete this. Let's go here, repackage it, kind of download it. Okay, there it is. Let's move the old one. You guys already know the drill by now. Okay, cool. So we have a counter. The counter resets when we click the X. If we switch to the timer, the timer automatically starts running, starting from 60 seconds. We pause it at 52 and then we're gonna switch to the counter which should have something in there okay cool the counter we increase it back a little bit and we switch back to our timer which should have stayed at 52 and it did and now we'll switch back to it restart if we reset our counter same thing the timer starts again if we reset our timer again it started from 60 but i'm wondering if that reset our counter and it didn't so that's good right there okay cool i think this is where we want it to be at for this so a couple things i think i could keep this version kind of like i'm just gonna change the file name on here i'm just gonna call it school v4 and same thing for the zip because i do want to make a few more changes but i want to have this handy because i think for all intents and purposes i could just keep using this one a few details i'm thinking right off the top of my head i think for this border it would be nice if this entire thing was a solid color not just a little outline around it but again we saw how much of a headache it was to get it to make specific styling changes the way we wanted to so i'm not sure i want to go deal with that headache right now the other part I remember when we made the project at the beginning, it gave us some suggestions for end of the week reporting. That sounds really nice as well. And last, there was another one I was thinking of and I may have forgotten. Oh no, it's not loading. But anyway, let's scroll back to the original request it had suggested for us and see if it remembers. What were some of the other features you had suggested when we initially proposed the prototype? Okay, so it's saying, I noticed we have some technical issues to fix Chrome storage, but regarding the initial features, we have proposed independent counters with counting, okay, implemented, timer functionality with pause resume, implemented, reset functionality implemented, data persistence between sessions, partially implemented, needs fixing. I haven't even really messed with that, but we could definitely look into it. Some additional features we could consider adding sound notifications when timers complete. That might be nice, but I wonder where we would get the sound file from. Custom timer durations instead of fixed 60 seconds. That one sounds good. 
export import settings and counter values, visual themes and color customizations, keyboard shortcuts for actions. Okay, so we could do custom timers, but I remember I had suggested something about weekly reporting. How would you suggest we go about creating a weekly report within the context of this Chrome extension? Okay, so for the reports, that's kind of its own thing, right? Because if we want to create a report, let's say this is the UI for it, well, what would we have on here? And this is the part where I'm using a mouse guy, so it's not going to be very pretty, but let's say we have a chart or a graph, whatever you want to call it. And if it was weekly, well, then we would start with the days of the week, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we would have, I'm guessing, graph points or charts that basically show what percentage of the you know, task or set tasks you're supposed to do, you accomplish for that day, I guess the main one or the top one would be 100%, right? And then at the bottom here, we have 0%. Okay, cool. So how would we calculate these, I guess, percentages? The point is supposed to be to get at 300, whether well, the new version of it is supposed to be 100 minutes of each. So for each time you run the timer, I guess ideally if you come at a certain stopping point where maybe you didn't complete the full 60 minutes or the full length of the timer, you should be able to potentially submit that data. Like maybe you only got to do 15 minutes, but you know, there was solid focus minutes. So you click the submit, maybe like a green check mark or something on here. And maybe that green check mark would save that data for the minutes or the counters. But the other thing I'm not too sure about is how do we resolve what value of minutes I guess in terms of minutes you spent either going through comments or, or sending messages and how does that translate over to how many messages or how many comments is it one minute per message or one minute per comment i think maybe ideally that's what it's supposed to be but it definitely takes longer than a minute to reply to a comment or send a message just because if you don't want it to sound spammy you do have to spend a little bit of time thinking about it so what if we said maybe two to three minutes equals one message. Maybe not. Five minutes sounds like a lot unless you're writing out a very well thought out reply. I think for comments, you can usually reply quicker, but if you're going through different threads, you're browsing, you're reading somebody's post and then going through the comments, that also takes a little bit of time. So I think for now, why don't we do this? We could set it by default to be for this metric. We have three comments equals the same as one minute or three messages. And we can set up a way to customize that exchange of value as in how many messages equal how many minutes. Yeah, that might be a little bit weird to implement. Maybe that's a little bit too much customization for the user. So we might not even do that. But I think by default, three minutes per message is fair. Not that it takes that long. I know sometimes it's quicker, but if you have, if you're using different platforms, if you have different CRMs, depending on where your audience is, just switching to find the comments or go through the leads. I mean, that's its own task. So yeah, we'll just leave it at that three minutes. Okay, cool. So how do we start telling our AI that that's what we want to do? We know so far it's done pretty well with the screenshot. So let's give it this beautiful work of user design that we made together. Let's add a weekly graph that measures the performance of whether we completed a specific percentage of the tasks that we we're supposed to do each day. 100% would equal 300 total minutes per day. But if we're using the click counters, then three messages or three comments or three clicks in the content counter would equal one minute. In order to pass the data that we're going to submit for these metrics, we're going to need another button within the UI that signals that we're trying to complete the task or that we've completed it for now. But I guess now that I'm thinking about it is what if the timer runs out automatically? when we want to automatically submit those minutes for you or we we wanted to ask you. I think that's fine. I think we can add that option later. It might be a little too much to do it all at once now. Or actually, what if when we click the X, we get prompted to restart or submit timer? Yeah, because I don't want an extra button here. Okay, yes, I think we will do that. Just whenever you click X, you get two little options, submit, restart. And that'll be it. So when the user clicks the X or what we've been using as the restart button, the user will be prompted with two options, either submit or 
restart the timer or counter for which the X was clicked. If the user clicks restart, the timer or counter will simply be restarted to its original value. If the user clicks submit, then the data value that that counter or timer was holding will be submitted and used as data to measure what percentage of the total task was completed for that day. Okay, so now we get to see how long uh, this can take. I mean, I don't know, obviously I hope this goes well, but I'm starting to think that the chat is getting a little bit long. Each request we're making is also taking a little bit longer. I don't want to get to a point where I have to, I guess where I would restart the project again. I know we can go in there and tinker with it, but still I want to be able to use this already. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, cool. So just clicking pause or zoom in timer mode. Okay, cool. Are the structures resolved? So again, this isn't exactly what we're working on. Let's check this out. Okay, so let's just click yes. Maybe it's breaking it down into smaller steps, but really I don't feel like anything changed. But let's find out on our own. Let's download this. So while it's working, let's try that even though we just zipped. Okay, cool. So I fix the storage errors, costing and saving and loading counter states. This is when your counter bar states persist correctly. So now it's still worrying about some older stuff that we don't really care for at the moment. So let's do this. Let's just resubmit the message. So it's saying I'll implement the weekly performance tracking with submit restart options, create a graph and visualize your daily progress. First, I'll fix the storage issues, then add new features. Okay, so let's just say that they're fixed and we want to move on. Okay, the errors you want to fix are fixed. Let's move on to the other features I requested already. Okay, nice. So it looks like it's actually doing the reset button and add, but I also want the graph. I don't know if maybe it's skipping that. Okay, so why does it keep going back to this? It's still asking us to verify this stuff. So it just kept making changes to the popup.js and then we start the app. Okay, I guess. So let's just ask it again, implement and submit the submit restart options for the reset button and that weekly performance tracking features. Okay, cool. So it looks from here like it just stopped working. I mean, it says the agent finished working. So yeah, all right. So it seems like the, from what it says here, the agent finished working and it just kind of stopped the process that we were doing, which is fine. I think at the end of the day, we're able to make the thing that we wanted, which was a timer and that we could switch between timer and a counter and that we could basically keep track of our work in our computer while we make it, especially for these kind of tasks. So definitely a win there. Again, this was a super good opportunity for me to test out the Replit agent. For use case for something that I want to make specifically, the graph, the metrics, those would have been nice to have. And to be honest, we hadn't even thought about them until it was suggested to me by the Replit agent, which is why I started implementing it. But now we're kind of running onto these little bugs. The calls are taking longer. And like I said, I think at this point, I'm a little bit more interested in just working on something else. But you know, for all intents and purposes, this is what I wanted. This looks way better than what we started with. If you look back up here, we had this very simple, very rough idea of what we wanted. We start collaborating with the Replit agent. We got this, I mean, definitely better than this, but not necessarily good. And we ended up with this and it does what we want, right? Uh, this ended up being a really good experience just to test this out.